families, one black, the other white, are mudbound in the Mississippi Delta after World War II. The grimness relieved by a loving mother and the bond between a couple of soldiers with a shared experience that transcends race, but only for a while. Over there, I was a liberator. People lined up in the streets waiting for us. Sometimes I actually miss it. Yeah, me too. Mary J. Blige makes a stunning switch from music to movies as a matriarch who must keep her own family out of harm's way and take care of a white couple's kids. I don't want you working for them. I won't be working for them. I'll be working for us. Amid complaints of a lack of diversity on the big screen, Mudbound is a harsh look at the daily challenges of segregation. Amid complaints of a lack of opportunities for women behind the camera, Director Dee Rees lets her actions speak louder than words. As a writer-director, I wanted to hire females, and it was like it was important to have women who weren't just, you know, it wasn't just tokenism, it was women who were the best at what they do. The best is what this list of my top ten is all about. You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth! Britain's darkest hour came at the start of World War II, and Gary Oldman, playing Britain's leader, is favored to win an Oscar. In real life, the star looks nothing like Sir Winston Churchill, and yet, Gary Oldman makes you forget anyone else who's ever played him. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing blocks. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender! Oldman redefines his career, which was already so distinguished, by giving us the flawed man behind the national icon. Now go. Go. Be. Be what? Be yourself. The heroism of Winston Churchill is well known, but the woman who ran the post, Catherine Graham, didn't get her due on the big screen until now. Do you have the papers? Not yet. The year is 1971, and the New York Times has published the Pentagon Papers that reveal the U.S. government knew there was no way to win in Vietnam, but kept fighting the war anyway. A federal judge stops publication of the papers, and the editor of the Washington Post, played by Tom Hanks, urges Meryl Streep as the owner to risk prosecution and publish what the Times cannot. Well, we could all go to prison. If there was one tip of the pyramid at the Washington Post, it was Catherine Graham. Why was she the only woman who ran a Fortune 500 company? Why was she the only woman in so many of those boardroom meetings? Those questions are ripped right out of today's, uh, today's concerns. It's about power, business, family. J. Paul Getty had all the money in the world, so why was he so hesitant to pay ransom when his grandson got kidnapped? The answers are intriguing. The ransom demand is made to his mother, played by Michelle Williams. Seventeen million dollars to release him. I don't have any money. No father-in-law has all the money in the world. And Getty wasn't inclined to spend any of it. I have 14 grandchildren. If I start paying ransoms, I'll have 14 kidnapped grandchildren. Getty sends an ex-CIA agent, played by Mark Wahlberg, to try and free the boy. Let the lady through, let's go! And his training kicks in as the kidnappers up the ante and cut off the teen's ear to show they're serious. We need to pay the ransom. And still, the billionaire won't budge. I do not have the money to spare. It's a tribute to director Ridley Scott. He creates real suspense, even though the outcome here is well known and sure. I think we got kind of a problem. Just as certain are the reasons a mother puts up three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks and eating Krispy Kremes to solve actual crime. So the mom, played by Frances McDormand, pays for signs hoping to provoke the chief, played by Woody Harrelson, to take action. I'd do anything to catch your daughter's killer. I don't think those billboards is very fair. Mom is more than a match for him and his racist deputy, played by Sam Rockwell. He's tough as an old boot, mama. His performance is so effective that Rockwell's win at the Golden Globes made some critics squeamish about rewarding him for such a distasteful role. Get out! Get Out seems like a mix of horror and humor, but Jordan Peele has transcended a mashup of genres to give us a unique take on our troubled times. Apparently, a whole bunch of brothers been missing in this suburb. A trip home to meet his girlfriend's parents turns very dark indeed, and Get Out is that rare movie which is entertaining and enlightening. Why is it resonated? I think we're all aware that there is rampant racism 
and xenophobia in this country, and it all came to the surface, yes, this year, and that's why it's so resonant. Lady Bird, is that your given name? Yeah. Lady Bird is the first film by actress Greta Gerwig, who stayed behind the camera and wrote a script inspired by her own journey here to the city. She really nailed it in, in every sort of way when it came to editing, casting, music, the look of it. Everything is so kind of pitch perfect. I want to go where culture is, like New York. The movie begins with an argument between two strong personalities, a daughter played by Saoirse Ronan and her mother played by Laurie Metcalf, who wants her daughter to stay close to home which is Sacramento, California. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail. Just another coming-of-age tale? Heart. I was hooked, my mind and my heart open to the journey of this young woman in search of her own identity. The Shape of Water is being called weird but wonderful, bizarre but beautiful, a fable with a unique relationship at its heart. This creature is intelligent capable of understanding emotions. The creature has been brought to a top secret government lab during the Cold War half a century ago. Custodians played by Octavia Spencer and Sally Hawkins do their best to stay out of the way of a mean boss, made more menacing by Michael Shannon. She deaf? Mute, sir, she can hear you. You clean that lab, you get out. But they are still around when a mobile tank arrives with a river god inside. What the men see is a monster Eliza regards as a kindred spirit. When he looks at me, he does not know how I am incomplete. The story of Dunkirk left me breathless with excitement. This is it. This is the closest we can ever come to living through World War II. We really focused on that as being one of the most important aspects of the film putting the audience in that scene. Director Christopher Nolan, who revived the Batman franchise with The Dark Knight, makes the best use of the giant IMAX format by not using computer-generated imagery here. He's on me. The story of Dunkirk is told from the air, land, and sea, where tens of thousands of small boats were sent from Britain to France to evacuate 400,000 troops trapped on a beach. Every hour the enemy pushes closer. This is one movie to see on the big screen if at all possible. Hostiles is another. It is savage and soulful, a lament for the dead, but also a hymn of hope, provided those left alive can face their own hatred. This is a Western that ain't your mum and pop's Western. It's not a sort of black hat, white hat, uh, good cowboy, bad Indian, uh, propaganda Western. Christian Bale has gained weight for another role, but in Hostiles, he is lean and mean as a U.S. Army captain forced to escort his sworn enemy, Chief Yellowhawk, home to die. He's a butcher. And the two of you ought to get along just fine. Wes Studi gives life to the Chief in a movie directed by Scott Cooper. I think he uh, went to great lengths to understand uh, not only the language, but uh, a lot of the uh, values inherent in uh, these different cultures. Just before the turn of the 20th century, the West is still wild. They're coming. Oh, dear God. A family is slaughtered by Comanches, leaving only Rosamund Pike's character alive to be rescued by the captain and his men. My main thing with this playing this character was trying to do an honest representation of the most unimaginable experience. Her performance is so real, the emotions she tapped so deep, it is still tough for Pike to talk about it more than a year after filming. Oh my God, it's, it still gets me. At the heart of this movie is a gradual Stop reconciliation it. between two bitter enemies, forced to face danger together in order to survive. Uh, in the and they won. Not many critics agree with me. Hostiles should be number one, but as many of you know by now, I just call them as I see them. So, which film was your favorite? Head to my Facebook page and tell me.